Hello everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to another episode of the Karo Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series, we're climbing to 2000 ELO on chess.com in rapid chess. And whether we have the white or the black pieces, we're going to be deploying a Karo Khan setup because it's fun, because it's interesting, and quite honestly, because I want to do it. So check out the previous episodes of the series in the playlist linked below if you want. Of course, you can watch this video in isolation as well. With that being said, let's get into the game. Okay, we have an American opponent by the name of Derek Volkman. So of course, we're going to be starting with C3. If my opponent goes E5, which he does, then we're going to be getting a reverse Karo Khan, essentially. And this kind of um, transposes into some Queen's Gambit declined positions, which I have talked over a bit in previous videos. What I want to avoid is going Bishop to F4, because I don't want to play a London setup. So I'm just going to get my knights out to squares like c3, f3. I'd like to put my bishop on g5 if I get the chance. My opponent can try and stop me by being annoying, but worst comes to worst, I can put it on f4. I'd just rather not, to be honest. So yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoy this video. Let me know if there's things just during the video. If you have any questions on like some of my explanations, some of the moves that I'm making, just drop me a question down in the comment below. Add a timestamp um, to make it easier for me to see what you mean. That would be very useful, please. Um, but other than that, just get involved. And I'd love to see you down in the comments. And also just let me know anything I can improve in the videos. Okay, bishop to g4 is a bit of an odd move. Because I think knight e5 is just a bit annoying for him to deal with. Because now his bishop's under attack. And importantly, this e-pawn hasn't moved yet, so the knight is not pinned to the queen because there's a pawn in the way. This is kind of a common um, idea when a bishop comes out to like g4 or g5 too early because if, um, if they're not actually pinning the knight to the opponent's queen, the knight can just counter-attack the bishop like we're doing in this game. If my opponent goes knight to f6 to defend the bishop, we could just take it, or we could play bishop g5 to pin the knight. He ends up retreating to f5, which just seems like a bit of a waste of time. g4 is a move that definitely exists here. Um, and if the bishop goes back to g6, I suppose we have a lot of pressure on it. it g4 is very committal. I have a feeling the engine would probably like it. I don't know if I do, though. Now, something that is worth bearing in mind... If you've been following this series from the start, in a previous video, in a position similar to this, where the bishop had come out very early, I think um, I think it came out to f5 immediately, actually. Uh, the computer was screaming for the move queen to b3 to target not only d5, but also b7, because the bishop had vacated the defense of b7. Now, I'm going to start with knight c3, just because... I want the knight to put pressure on the center. I also don't want my opponent to have the option of taking the knight. And now queen b3 looks like a pretty good move. And like I said, this is where an engine analysis can be very useful because it can show you I ideas that you can then remember, not for like an exactly... Wait, not for like the exact same position. You can't just memorize it. Well, I mean, you can, but it's not going to pay off all that often. Um, but my point is, it, the computer analysis can show you ideas that you can look for when certain parameters are met in positions. And here with the bishop getting out early and this pawn structure, I think queen b3 is just a good move. Bishop to f4 is probably a good move as well, but like I said, I'd like to avoid it if possible. Something like queen b3, queen b6 is likely. And I don't really want to trade queens. You know, if I take, then he opens the file for himself. I'm thinking bishop f4 might have to be played, you know. g4 still exists. It does. It's adventurous, but it might just be good. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. This um, arguably is flimsy. Bishop to e6 probably makes the most sense to me with like ideas like f6 to try and dislodge the knight's defense of the pawn. But by retreating the bishop to g6, you stay on this long diagonal, but your bishop is vulnerable. 
I could try h4, which looks really, really powerful. I could go f4 as well, but I think I prefer h4. Because we're threatening h6, bishop e4, and f3 to trap the bishop. Uh, which is why I wanted to move the h-pawn rather than the f-pawn, because then the bishop could potentially try and go to e4. Okay, but now... Do we want to take... We could go h5, and if takes, takes. My opponent can't take back. That's tempting. If h5, the bishop retreats, of course we take. If h5, bishop takes h5. Rook h5, pawn e5, rook e5, bishop e7. Bishop g5, knight f6. That's a really crazy position. I could drop back to f3, of course, but then the bishop always has this escape square, and I don't really want to allow that. So I feel like h5 makes a lot of sense here. And he retreats to f7. So I think I should just take this without thinking too hard. Because at the end of the day, we have some scary-looking pawns on the king's side. that I can maybe try and go g5 in the future. And his king is weak, right? I think bishop f4 followed by e3 and bishop d3 make a whole lot of sense here. e4 I would like to play, but I feel like my king is too weak for that. Now queen b3 makes less sense because the king is over here. I suppose we can maybe try and go e4 and play on this pin. So I mean like queen b3, queen c7 to defend b7 and d4. That pawn becomes very, very hard to defend, actually. I'm going to do it. I, I feel like that's actually really tough for black to respond to. Let's say b6 to defend the pawn without taking the queen's eyes off of d5. b6, e4, knight e7 to defend the pawn, bishop to g2 to attack the pawn. We'll have one, two, three, four attackers. He'll have one, two, three defenders. And this diagonal will be weak if b6 is played, right? The rook is on the other end of that. So b6, e, b6, e4, knight e7, bishop g2. What can my opponent do there? I suppose after b6, e4, he could play something like queen to e8 to pin the pawn to my king. But then... If b6, e4, queen e8, I can probably just go bishop to e3 to break the pin. And the queen can't take this because it's defended by the knight. And black is in a lot of trouble there because this pawn is still pinned. So, yeah, although queen b3 initially didn't really make sense to me because we, like, we're moving away from his king, right? I want to be moving this way, not this way. But this diagonal could be really important especially because I'm moving to b3 with tempo. And he goes queen c7, but now I think e4 is just... You can't do anything. Because I have three attackers, you have one defender. I mean, he's stopping bishop f4 by going queen c7, sure, but I don't think I'm that bothered about it. Because I'm playing e4, the bishop probably belongs on e3, just to hold everything together for now, while my other pieces cause some chaos. And if this pawn gets dislodged, this bishop is coming straight to c4 to barrel down this long diagonal. This is um, a very bad situation for black. Very bad. Let's say knight e7 takes, 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 takes. The king would have to go, like, to e8. Which is rough. I could add another attacker. I could. Is it a bit much? Should I just take? Or is it worth adding an attacker? So that maybe if takes, 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 I can take with the bishop? Maybe that's slightly better? Rather than taking with the queen, and then we have pressure on b7. Right, after all these pawns disappear. Worth considering. I do like the move bishop g2. I do think it's a good move, and I don't think black can do anything about it. 
You know what might have been better, actually, in this position? Maybe queen to b6. Maybe that solved black's problems. Because he defends b7, and I can't use this pawn, like, as a... Wait. I can't pin the pawn anymore properly, because he can exchange with me at any moment. Queen b6 looks like it was the best move here. And... I'm not exactly sure how I should have responded to it had he played it. Don't know. But he didn't play it. Here I think bishop g2 is just slightly better. I think it's just minutely better. Now let's take. There is an argument to be made for taking with the bishop, actually. If bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, black is screwed because I'm attacking his queen and I have a discovered check coming. If bishop takes king e8, bishop f7, king d8, then like bishop to e3, that looks good. And we block his bishop from getting out because his knight can't take me. If knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, king e8, queen b7, we're attacking the rook and the queen, so he has to exchange rook b8, let's say bishop f3. We're just up two pawns in what should be a good endgame. The d pawn will be weak, but with the bishop shepherding it on d5, that's pretty, still pretty strong. So the question is whether I want to take with the bishop or the knight, basically. That's what I've got to figure out. Bishop takes may, well, Bishop takes obviously sets a trap because he can't take me. But Bishop takes King E8. Maybe then I can go um, Queen B7. Rather than Bishop to F7. And again, he still has to trade with me. But the difference is I keep this knight and he keeps this knight. Which I think benefits me. Because the knight blocks in his bishop and my knight is pretty good. And it will support uh, a D5 push. So I think, for those reasons, wait, bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen a5, check. Oh, just bishop to d2. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go for it. I think this keeps things a bit more simple. I mean, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes... King moves and queen b7 is good. But I think th keeping these knights on the board only benefits me. Let me know if at any point of that calculation you got lost along the way or I wasn't explaining myself properly. Again, just drop a comment below. Let me know where you're confused or where you think I might have gone a bit wrong in my calculation. And I will respond to any comment that... I, I mean, I'll respond to any comment. So any confusion, just let me know. Um. But I think this kind of solves a lot of our problems because my opponent can't stop us from winning at least another pawn. And being two pawns up should be decisive. Um, yeah, that, that, that should be good. I mean, I prefer if this pawn was on like C3 or something so we'd only have two pawn islands. The fact that the D pawn is isolated definitely isn't amazing. But I suppose at the same time it is also a passed pawn. So you, you can choose whether you want to see it as a burden or as an asset. And I guess we have to try and argue that it is an asset. Okay, moves his king to e8. So I think we can just take on b7. Oh, oh no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. I'm bugging. Yeah, okay, cool. So this is all nice and easy. Rook b8. I'm not sure where I want to put the bishop. Me? I feel like f3, but then also g2. Uh, a6 I don't think makes a lot of sense. I want to stay on this diagonal. I could go to e4. I don't know if it accomplishes anything, though. Because we're already covering these squares. I'm going to go to F3. 
And I think I want to castle. Because then the king can protect these potentially overextended pawns. I mean, I'm not in danger of getting checkmated or anything. So I'm not really castling for safety. I'd more so be castling so my king can get closer to where I think it would be useful. And my rook can get involved in the game. Okay. Yeah, castling looks good. I'm not exactly sure where this knight is going, but I guess he's just trying to get his bishop out. I'm going to castle. Bishop b4 can be met with knight to d5, which would be basically a mirror image of what happened in the opening with bishop g4, knight e5. Again, these patterns exist in many different ways on the chessboard, so it's good to try and recognize them where you can. I'd love to be able to play bishop to f5, my opponent stops me, to uh, attack the rook, because the rook is running out of squares. But we can't do that. Rook e1 looks good, because if king f7, then bishop d5 check. Okay, yeah, nice and easy. Knight e4 attacks the bishop. If bishop c7... Oh, wait, maybe I can go b3 to try and set up knight e4. If the bishop stays on this diagonal stopping bishop f5, then I have bishop to a3. If the bishop step, like, keeps on this long diagonal, then I can go bishop to f5 attacking the rook. Yes, that looks good. Uh, if b3, bishop b4. Bishop d Two. It's a little bit annoying. Mm. Is Bishop C six a viable move? Trying to go Rook to E eight. Bishop c6 attacking the knight. You have to defend the knight. And if you go something like knight b6. You can't move this knight because of rook e8 and rook a and rook h8. The so bishop c6 knight b6. Maybe we can go knight b5. Attacking the bishop. Bishop b4. That's a little bit annoying. Bishop c6, knight b6. Rook e6. Then if bishops to b4, we have knight d5. This looks like it... W <laughs> I don't know if it works, but it looks like it could be good. I just have to try and get my um, timing right, basically. I don't want my pieces to get kind of sort sort of jumbled on top of each other in strategic terms, if you get what I mean, or in like tactical terms. I want them to be able to flow forward, and I want to try and be able to bring out this bishop with some kind of tempo, and then get my other rook involved. The rook e6 looks like a good move to me. Just simply attacking the bishop. I suppose if knight b4, this knight does cover the d5 square. But I can just play bishop to f5, and if rook e8, then rook e1. If king f7. Mm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see how he responds. If bishop to b4, knight d5, knight d5, can I go bishop to d7? I don't actually have a threat there. Oh, we go. It's bishop c7. That's unexpected. b3 just looks like a good move. If b3, king f7... 
Maybe just D5. Uh, B3 if... Rookie 8, Bishop A3, King F7. Rookie 1, take... Oh no, that just loses a rook. <laughs> what am I on about? B3, rookie 8. Rookie 1, King F7. Wait, no, I'm doing the move order wrong. I'm doing... There, what am I on about? I think I have to include D5 at some point. I could go Knight B5 and just attack the Bishop, actually. That looks good. One of the reasons I didn't want to go Pawn D5 was because I was thinking that was the square my Knight should be using to get involved. But this way, we avoid this knight trying to trade itself, and we still accomplish the goal of attacking the bishop. If the bishop drops back to d8, my opponent can't go rook e8 to offer me trades, and this threat becomes more powerful. If uh, bishop to d8, b3, trying to play bishop a3 and also trying to get my rook out, but I could also just go bishop c7. Bishop c7, rook c8. Um, rook e1. Wait. If bishop to f4, rook c8, knight d6, attacking the rook and threatening rook to e8 checkmate. That looks so good. That looks awesome. That's such a nice combo. Knight d6, right? Yeah. I mean, the knight just covers all the important squares, and the bishop's cutting the connection. I mean, the rook has no real safe squares anyway, but... Yeah, that doesn't work. Doesn't work because of checkmate. Wow. What a finish. What a finish. That was a really nice combination. And I have a feeling there was a whole lot of nothing that Black could actually do about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. That was a very enjoyable ending for myself. Hopefully for you guys as well. As always, check out the playlist below if you want to see the previous episodes. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or just get involved in any of the conversations going on down there. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. We're going to get into a brief analysis, so I'd encourage you to stick around for that. Let's do it. All right, so computer gives me 86.1% accuracy. My opponent 65.5, so not perfect. We'll see where we went wrong. Here we just have an exchange Caro, which basically transposes into a, there, into a Queen's Gambit decline. Had we have followed the move order, d4, d5, c4, e6, takes, takes. Which isn't the best line for white, but that gets us to the same position as this, which is what happened in the game, just for a different move order. Knight f3, bishop g4, which I thought was just odd. And you know how I was saying earlier in the game that in these positions where the bishop comes out early, queen b3 is often an idea? Yeah, it's an idea now. I could have played it immediately. And if black, say, goes queen c8 to defend the pawn, then you lose d5. If you go b6 to defend the pawn, apparently e4 is completely winning for white. If you take knight e5, bishop e6, bishop c4, and black is on the verge of collapse, apparently. <laughs> I guess white's just going to win back the pawn with massive compensation. And if um, black tries to take and trade the bishops off, I mean... Okay, well that just gives up the c7 pawn. Knight d7 loses to knight d5, and you just get an absolutely swarmed. So, yeah, watch out for queen b3. We went knight e5, which is still a decent move. Bishop f5, bishop b6 was better, which I kind of expected, but... You get e4 is good. And after bishop e4, queen b3. Well, that, that just, that's just so odd. That's so odd. But I mean, same idea as before, really. 
We go knight c3, which is still good. c6 is a blunder because of e4 again. Oh, if d e4, bishop c4, bishop e6, takes, takes, and then check. So basically, and if um, you take with the bishop, takes, takes, bishop c4. And it's just so hard for black to defend himself. And I guess queen b3 ideas exist as well. As obviously, as well as queen h5. It's kind of crazy. I chose g4, which is just a straight up miss. Um, here was me saying that I thought the engine would love this move and it actually hates it. Opponent goes bishop g6. Again, bishop b6 was definitely better. I go h4, which is the best move here. Opponent goes f6, which was a good find. And here I should have taken, but I kind of just didn't like the fact that I was giving my opponent an open file. Queen c2, knight e7. I saw this line because queen c2 attacks g6. But I just didn't know what to do from here. Bishop f4 is apparently the best move. But I suppose the point is that black can't develop properly because um, of the weakness of his pawns. But like moves like g g5 exists trying to play on this pin which was the reason i didn't want to open the h file so difficult to evaluate we go h5 and my opponent drops his bishop back which is a mistake the lines that i had calculated were fe5 hg6 and i thought that white was better which white is i calculated bishop to h5 the desperado rook h5 pawn h5 rook h5 knight e7 and I thought maybe bishop g5. I mean, there's lots of different options. Bishop h3 is apparently the best. Although that just looks so weird. But I saw this line. One line that I didn't see or really consider was bishop e4. Where after knight e4, f e5, the knight maybe goes back to g3. And then like e4, queen b3, queen c7. And this is a very interesting position. But again, I think the simplicity of the pawn structure probably benefits white just because of the weakness of the black king. I mean, the computer says white is better, but like, it's difficult to know why exactly. I guess it's just the king side weakness of my opponent. Maybe the fact that white has a bishop pair as well. And I can probably just keep expanding on the king side of my pawns. Opponent chooses bishop f7 though. We of course take. Go queen b3. Queen c7 was an inaccuracy. Queen b6 was better. And yeah, the best that I can do here is just drop my queen back. I don't know if I would have done this and just give up the pawn entirely for more development. Not easy to play. Not easy to play. But my opponent goes to c7, which makes my life quite easy. e4, knight e7, bishop g2 which is fine. Knight d7, we take, take, and take. So bishop d5 is basically the same as knight d5 because the computer knows that we have to go for this position where I go two pawns up. We have takes, takes, rook b8. And here was where the game was less obvious for me because I'm. It, it, it's not clear where the next plan of attack is. Because I've basically exploited the weaknesses that I've been trying to get at the whole game. Now those weaknesses are gone, it's difficult to know exactly what to do. So I figured, hey, let's just get my pieces nice and active and see what comes of it. We have bishop d6, check, king f8. King f7 isn't really playable because of bishop d5 and you get forced to f8 anyway. But my bishop's just more active. So king f8, bishop c6, which is the best move. Very happy I saw that. The whole point is that this knight can't move because of mate. No, sorry, not because of mate, because um, I win the rook. Not mate. So knight cb6 is the only real way to defend. Rook e6. Knight b5 was better. After bishop b4, I'm supposed to play rook e2, which feels a bit slow, and that's why I didn't play it. I thought it made more sense to go rook e6. Now, I was expecting bishop b4, Knight d5 is apparently the best idea. And after knight d5, go bishop d5. And if rook e8. a3. Bishop a5. 
and h6. I mean... Okay. Okay. The opponent goes bishop c7, though. I go now b5. And it is so difficult to play this for black. The best move is rook c8, defending the bishop like this. But even then, like bishop f4, you have to give up the exchange because your rook's complete. Well, I suppose you could go to c8. Rook a1, maybe king f7, but then you're just losing the knight. So this is pretty impossible for black to try and figure out. And it's just the bishop pair versus the knight pair. And the bishops can just be so dominant. Not all the time, but the majority, I'd say. Opponent chooses bishop to d8, and I just noticed this massive issue on the e8 square, which was part of the reason I played um, bishop to c6 in the first place. So I go bishop to f4, because rook c8 is the obvious move. The computer wants this. Oh, and then knight d6. So the exact same idea. But I went knight to d6 immediately. Because, I mean, there's just nothing you can do. The only way you can really save yourself is like bishop c7. Trying to open up the rook's defense. But then I just, you know, win the rook. I guess you can take on f4. Rook a e1. King f7, I don't know. There's just nothing you can do. As um, the black pieces here, you can try and curl up in a ball, but... I very much doubt it's going to work like this line shows. So, yeah, my opponent took on c6. We have mate on e8. And just a very nice game. And I guess kind of a showcase of how you can still attack without queens. You just have to think a lot more positionally. Because pieces, like the rest of the pieces, can't be quite as dynamic as a queen can be. And a knight and rook working together can accomplish a whole lot of things. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, check out the playlist below if you want to see the previous episodes of the series. Uh, yeah, there'll be something popping up on the screen right now. So go click it.